If you are an XRP holder, you've been doing a very good job of displaying patience throughout all this time of the case with the SEC. Well, in today's video, I'm going to tell you why you might just have to wait a little bit longer. Because Judge Netburn just came down with a ruling that favors the SEC, or does it? I'm going to tell you what she actually ruled and why this could actually favor Ripple, and contrary to what most people think. And before the judge did that, Ripple actually responded to what I talked about in my previous video, which was the SEC asking for an extension of time. Ripple, of course, objected. So I'm gonna tell you what they pointed out, what the judge ruled, and what this could all mean as far as time frames and possible settlement. Also, today the 25th is a very big day because the Sologenic NFT marketplace is officially launching, or at least doing a soft launch for its NFT creators that had signed up to get early access. They're going to be going on and minting new NFTs. So I'm going to tell you where you can go and actually see some of the first projects that are going to be minted on the XRP ledger. So if you are interested in some of those NFTs, getting your hands on some early mints. I'm going to talk about where to find it. Hey everyone, my name is Randy. Welcome back to the Late Night Grind. And right now I'm talking about the Ripple versus the SEC case, but I'm also covering cryptocurrency news, investment markets, and personal finance. So if any or all these topics interest you, make sure you subscribe to the Late Night Grind. Just hit that subscribe button. Also hit the bell notification icon so that YouTube will send you a notification when I release a new video. And if you're feeling generous, I'd appreciate it if you do two things. Smash the thumbs up button and watch this video all the way to the end. You guys always do such a great job of that. I'd really, really appreciate it. So with that out of the way, let's jump into it. So first, let's talk about what the markets did yesterday because yesterday was a crazy day, not just for crypto, not just for Bitcoin, but for the rest of the, but for the, rest of the markets as a whole. The Dow Jones Industrial Average, which is a primary index in the US, was actually down by over $1,000 yesterday. And then it recouped all of it. And the S&P 500 followed suit. The NASDAQ, which didn't fall quite as hard, followed suit as well. And so did Bitcoin. Early in the morning, Bitcoin was actually down below 33000 before it rallied by several thousand dollars, going up over 37000 500 at least at one point. So of course the big speculation is that is that is that going to be the bottom for Bitcoin? Is it going to be onward and upward from here? Now well, that remains to be seen. Because the one thing we do know right now is that the illiquid is that the illiquid supply is at such a high level, meaning there's just barely any Bitcoin uh, on exchanges to actually buy. When there is volume, the price goes and it goes very quickly. In fact, in fact, today was the first time I actually saw a few short squeezes, uh, meaning people shorting Bitcoin actually get squeezed and have to buy in at a higher price, ratcheting up the price even quicker. Haven't seen that in a long time, several months. So XRP, which was trading at about 55 cents, is now up to about 60 to 61 cents. So with that as the backdrop of what's going on, now we have the Fed who is having meetings on Wednesday, the Federal Reserve, which is going to be talking about our favorite topics, interest rates, inflation, the US dollar, and everything that affects uh, these investment markets and cryptocurrency markets. So while all of that is going on, the Ripple versus the SEC case has been heating up. So if you watched my video from a couple of days ago, you know the SEC actually asked for another extension. And if you've been following this case for the past, oh, I don't know, year, you know that the judge has largely been ruling with Ripple on many, many motions. However, she's largely been ruling with the SEC whenever they ask for extensions. Now, a lot of people see that as a negative. I don't really necessarily see that as a negative. You just have to wait a little bit longer. In terms of this case actually playing out, I think that I don't think it necessarily benefits one side or the other. In fact, I think it shows uh, a little bit more weakness on the side of the SEC because they clearly came into this case completely unprepared. Okay, so what did the judge actually rule on? Well, the SEC asked for an extension so they could object to one of the judge's rulings from uh, the uh, from about two weeks ago. Uh, she ruled that the Bill Hinman speech was essentially his opinion, just like the SEC had stated back in June, uh, but that all of the emails, all of the uh, discussions around that speech are not protected because they're not deliberative process documents. They can't be sealed. Therefore, Ripple gets access to them. So the SEC fought back and said, no, 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 listen, we want some extension. We want an extension of time because we want to actually fight this. Uh, we want to be able to submit a whole bunch of other documents that uh, helps prove our argument because ultimately we don't want those emails 
to get into the hands of Ripple. And by doing that, the SEC might be showing their hand a little bit. So Ripple, of course, came back with an objection and they said, no, 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 this has to be rejected. The extension has to be rejected. And ultimately what they want uh, reversed, which is the Bill Hinman speech to not be considered opinion, but to be considered guidance so that all these emails will be protected and sealed and Ripple won't get their hands on them. Uh, Ripple said, that's ridiculous. You even said back in June, you even said multiple times under oath that it was Bill Hinman's opinion and now you're trying to claim that it of course was guidance just because you're trying to protect emails. Meanwhile, back on June 24th, you claimed it was his opinion just so you could try to prevent Bill Hinman from being deposed by Ripple's lawyers, which actually happened, which actually failed and it went through and he was deposed by Ripple's lawyers. Now they're, now they're trying to claim the complete opposite. So if anything, this makes the SEC's case look really weak because ultimately if there was no clarity around digital assets, that really, really strengthens Ripple's case. So why could this actually help Ripple? Well, uh, beside the fact that you have to wait a little more time, a few more weeks, uh, possibly even another month for discovery to end, this could benefit Ripple because of one reason. In fact, the judge may have actually granted this extension because of one reason. If she grants this extension and they are allowed to object to it and submit their objections uh, for reconsideration, then they can't appeal it. However, if she denied this motion and said, no, I'm not gonna give you an extension and I'm not gonna give you the chance to submit any, any documentation uh, to fight your case, then the SEC could essentially appeal it, which means that would take even longer than what's going on now. And worst case scenario, they might actually be able to throw it down to a second circuit court, which would take even longer. And so by doing this, she's actually probably preventing this case from going even longer, but also making it appeal proof, meaning she wanted a reason to actually make her decision stick, make it bulletproof. So the SEC wanted to submit 66 documents to try to prove their case as to why that should be reversed. And the judge said, um, you can, but you can only submit 10 documents, not 66. So it looks like we're gonna have to uh, kind of sit on our hands for a couple of weeks and talk about all the potential settlement dates because a lot of people are talking about settlement, especially on Twitter. Why? Now, why would they be doing that? Well, they've been doing it for a year, but they're doing, But the reason they're doing it now is because if the SEC is essentially caught in doublespeak, which they are, and they have a documented proof, they've said under oath on multiple occasions that they believe that Bill Hinman, uh, that the speech was Bill Hinman's opinion, and yet in multiple other documents, they said, no, 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 this is official guidance. They are clearly setting themselves up for failure and it falls right into Ripple's fair notice defense. And the SEC does not want to lose its leverage, does not want to lose its power, because it's now coming out that Gary Gensler, the, the chairman of the SEC, has made it clear to certain people that he is going after crypto as he wants most of it regulated as securities. In fact, Jim Cramer came out with a tweet the other day saying that Dogecoin is somehow a security and some people were speculating that, hold on, Jim Cramer recently had a meeting with Gary Gensler, the head of the SEC, maybe he's starting to change his tune on cryptocurrencies. I don't know, that's one to look out for. Not many people pay attention to him anymore, especially if you think Dogecoin is a security. Sorry, you're not gonna make it. All right, guys, that's all I got for today. Thanks for watching all the way to the end for giving it a big thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Also, check out the community tab on my channel. I put up polls up there on a weekly, sometimes daily basis. Love to know what you guys think about this Ripple versus the SEC case, as well as all the other cryptocurrency market issues. And if you wanna have a conversation with me, you can always leave a comment with me in the comment section down below, or I have a link to my Twitter profile in the description. You can go and have a conversation with me there. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And as always, I'll see you guys on the next video.